if you've set your own timeline for a particular project and it's starting to feel a little crunchy and you're wondering if you should shift it to give yourself more time or just go for it to throw everything at it, then, well, I have some thoughts. I have some, some thoughts for you based on what I've done and how I help my clients and support my clients in making these decisions because the truth is nobody can answer the question but you. But the question is really, how are you going to feel on the other side of it? So say, for example, you set a goal and in this particular month, it's April, next month is May. And you said by the end of May, I'm going to have X, Y, Z complete. And what if right now you're feeling really far away from that? And it actually feels like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that it's already almost May and I am not anywhere close to having that complete. So a few ways that you can approach it right now. You've probably heard about good, better, best goals. I don't know who invented it, but it's a framework out in the ether in the industry. And I actually just had the opportunity to share it with my my fourth grader <laughs> the other night at the kitchen table, bless his heart, having me as his mom, because he was talking about testing for his recorder belts. You know, so the recorder is like the wind instrument that fourth graders get here. I, I don't know if it's like across the United States in public school, fourth grade, but this is like a big thing for fourth graders in music class. And they have little belts, which are literally just yarn strings, you know, tied on the recorder based on kind of like in martial arts where you can test for a different color belt. And so he was saying the other day that he wanted to get five in his next belt test. I was like, wow, okay, awesome, that's great. How about you also set like a, a couple of other benchmarks <laughs> so that it's not like five or fail, but you have, you know, like a few different op options to reach for. And that's the idea of the good, better, best goals, right? So he set a good goal of two because he was like confident he could do that and it would still be like, yay, okay, two, two new belts. And then I think that better was three and then best was five. Either way, he ended up being so excited when he came, when we were done with school yesterday, because he actually got four. So it was like better and a half, <laughs> better and a half is what we called it. And so I tell him that because of course I'm absolutely 100% talking to myself where it's a process of my learning and redefining goal setting and blah, 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 and making it work for me because there was absolutely a point in life and business. And I easily can slip right back there where it's like, it's this or bust. And if you're listening to this, you're probably a lot like me, recovering overachiever and gold star, teacher's pet, blah, 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 hinging a lot of your worth and value on external validation for external markers of success. I made this grade. I got this degree. I achieved this benchmark in business or whatever. And again, this is a conversation for another episode in terms of untangling our actual worth as humans from all of that stuff. But as it relates to this conversation now, if you have a deadline, a timeline, a self-imposed timeline that's looming and you're wondering, should I shift it or go for it? One, you could apply this good, better, best scaffolding to it. So it's like, okay, maybe I'm not gonna have all of that complete, but what's like the bare mini, as I call it, the bare minimum the bare mini that would feel really good. And that's like your good goal. So if you had something that you were planning to do or a goal you were trying to hit by the end of May, it's like, okay, let's bake in some options so that you can have more of the growth mindset as opposed to the fixed mindset with like, it's all or nothing. So what are some other options that we can make this more of a multiple choice situation so that it's not so extreme and polarized? And so what's the bare mini that would feel really good to have finished again based on stuff that you can control like the actual tasks that you can control and then what would feel good not to push yourself I mean it's semantics but I I would think even saying push feels like again a slippery slope for burnout and stressing yourself out and la 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 so stretching like what would be a stretch but it would also feel really good and potentially doable if all conditions are perfect, everybody stays healthy and you don't have any, you know, like it is May. If you have kids in school, I mean, May can be a really, really full month, actually. But if everything worked out just great, you could potentially get get all of these things done. Again, this is just a list of the things that are within your control. And then there could be a stretch, which is great. And the cool thing is, 
if this is your own timeline, then you can then shift beyond. So once the, once May rolls around, of course, you can always adjust before you get to that point if you want to. But then you could do aim for your bare mini by the end of May. And then you can give yourself June or the first two weeks of June or whatever to then get to the next and the next. And it's like it's like a, an inchworm, <laughs> an inchworm or a caterpillar is what I'm seeing. But it's like just seeing it as more of an evolving process and a little bit of a moving target because life is going on so I can do a whole nother episode on this just remind me please because I'm talking and then I'm going to forget what I said but if you'll remind me to walk you through my idea frame <clears throat> idea framework which is identity desires energy and actions that's like my my favorite strategy if you will framework for on her terms goal setting because I'm not interested in saying like, do this for this sake or someone else's expectation. It's like, what are the resources you currently have available to you? What's the support that you can enlist or can't? So let's be honest about it. Like the energy and the bandwidth and the brain width and the capacity is all a really important thing. And when we leave that part out of the puzzle, no smart goal is ever going to be fulfilling because you're going to feel like it's happening in a vacuum, but it's not. It's happening in real life. So that's what I wanted to share with you. If you've, if it's been a while or you haven't really thought about good, better, best goals in terms of like your actual control, like your list of things and commitments that you will make, then give that a go. And again, you can think of it as like, what's the bare mini? What's the, in an air quotes, perfect world, I could do this if everyone participates and plays nicely. <laughs> And then, whoa, this would just be like really amazing. And even thinking about what it would take to get this particular stuff done actually shakes loose some creative ideas, you know? And so it's, it can be a fun thought experiment, but that's the point is to let it be a fun thought experiment and nothing to do with your worth as a human, whether you get it all done or get this result or not. So I'm with you in this reworking and renegotiating and recalibrating the goal setting stuff. I am right there with you that could potentially help. And then the other piece is really the question that you have to ask for yourself. If you're like, am I lowering the bar in a way that is like, yes, this feels good. I am honoring myself and my identity and my desires and my commitments and what I actually care about, or does lowering the bar and changing it feel like settling, shrinking? I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to do it. And again, that could be a semantics thing where you're like, if you're anything like me, you could talk yourself in and out of both options. You know, you're like, well, I can make a case that it's this and I can make a case that it's this. But what matters most is to be really, really honest with yourself. How am I going to feel if and when this month passes and I haven't given it a go and I haven't at least done the bare mini? Am I going to feel actually like relieved and grateful because I'm actually choosing to focus on other things that mean a lot to me right now? Or am I gonna be like, dang it, another month has gone by and I didn't show up for myself in that particular aspect of my dream or my vision? Only you can know that. And again, having the good, better, best kind of framework and committing to like your honest, real life, bare mini, can actually help you build some serious momentum because that is about lowering the bar in a way that actually feels like it's honoring who you are, who you love, what you got going on right now. You know, let me know what you think. Click the link, share your thoughts. There's lots more we can talk about as it relates to on her term school setting. And I look forward to the conversation with you. Okay, technically that was the end of the episode, but since you're still here, one, I'd love to thank you for spending part of your day with me, and two, I'd love to ask you if you would take 30 seconds, maybe 60, to leave a rating and review in your podcast app before you tap out today. If you've already done that, it's amazing. Please send me a screenshot so I can thank you personally, and know that sharing this episode with a friend has the same magical powers, and I deeply appreciate both. Also, in case you're listening to the end to see if I ever actually introduce myself, hi! My name is Nikki Elledge Brown. I'm the host and author of Naptime Empires and this here on Her Terms podcast. You can find me around the internet at Nikki Elledge Brown in most places, but what you may appreciate most is actually over at onherterms.com. It's what I call the insider library. 
notes where you can get inside scoop, first listen rights, email updates every time there's a new episode, and then special insider only bonus content. It's all over in our private feed. Okay, that's a wrap for real. I'll meet you in the next episode.